right, guys, can I get your attention? Turn this up a bit more. All right. So, uh, before we get started in the actual review session, uh, one thing, I sent an announcement on uh, Canvas about a little survey. Um, and as I explained, my announcement it used to be paper-based, um, and I've gone ahead and converted it to uh, some modern version of an online survey within Canvas. Please complete that. The good thing about doing it digital is you guys get paid for completing it. Before, it would just be out of the goodness of your heart to fill out a piece of paper, but now I pay you in participation marks. So that's going to be open. Um, it's right there, by the way. Um, it'll be open until Friday, this Friday at midnight. The stroke of midnight, it closes. So you have until then to, to do this little welcome survey. The average time so far is five and one half minutes. So that's how long it should take. All right. So the other thing I have, minimize that, class reps. Okay. One male and one female. Who would like to be the representatives for this course this year? Oh man, don't jump at me all at once. Okay, we had the first. Boy, I was surprised it took so long. Now, okay, I got, I got the male. Can I get one female? Anybody? I got my glasses on so I can see you. Okay, we, got, we, have, the one, we have the male and female. Just one second. Okay, I have donned glasses. I've been resisting wearing glasses in my lectures for many, many, many years. Well, forever. I finally did that. Two reasons. One, so I could see you. Um, and two, for my own protection. Okay? So in this bag is a bunch of little balls. Okay? They're stress balls. I explained this last time. Shoved inside is a little chocolate. All right. So as we go through our review sessions, I'm going to be throwing these things out. I don't know if wearing glasses are going to increase my accuracy or not, but uh, they're definitely going to protect me because usually I'll expect I'll throw it out. You guys will discharge that, put it in your pocket or eat it right away. Um, and then what I'd like you to do is throw it somewhere back here. OK, now I've had lots of students. I got I've got nailed in different parts of my body before. <laughs> And usually the, the real, the clever ones, and I started looking at you guys, the clever ones is, I, I won't, I'll be like, okay, and I'll sit in there talking, they'll be waiting for me to forget that a ball is out there and there's live ammunition in the room. And then as I'm sitting there, I'll just get clocked in the head, okay? So I'm gonna try to avoid that happening to me. And uh, you know, so anyway, try to be cool about it. Whatever you do, does, can anybody, here, I'll just throw out the first one. I'm gonna ask this question. I know some of you guys are in retail. Okay, which means you work at a shop. Um, does anybody know what shrinkage is? It's a of shrinkage when um, staff steal parts. Exactly. And it's not just staff. It's shrinkage could, it room. could be anybody. That's when you got stuff stolen from your shop. <coughs> All right, so here you go. First recipient. I'm going to watch you. There we go. And you can just throw it back here and I'll collect them later on. So uh, please don't incur shrinkage, okay? It takes me time to grab these things. I slice them open like a little Pac-Man. I have to gouge it out a little bit to make room, volume. Anyway, it takes me time, and I don't want to lose these guys. Okay, we got two varieties. These are kind of, I'm disappointed. They get all mutilated and weird, but it's kind of like the globe and kind of piece-like. So here's our normal. I like those, but I'm almost out of those because of shrinkage. Um, anyway, please return them, all right? I'm not going to sit there and do a count all the time. They do get lost sometimes. People take souvenirs. But uh, please don't, don't be that person. All right? So if you guys who I gave those uh, forms can just give those back at the end, that'd be awesome. And then I'll probably, well, I'll work with you on how you want to share your names and stuff like that. Um, so what I have is our first Kahoot. All right? Now this is not for the chocolates, this is for participation marks. So when you have arrived today, hopefully you're not doing it right as we speak and watching, there's so many apples out there. Look at all those little apples everywhere. My gosh, very popular. Um, 
when you arrive in the review session, say 10 a.m., this is a, a, an odd one because we had that little welcome. So when you arrive, I expect you to have watched, completely watched all of the lecture videos that relate to the material that we're covering in the review session. Okay, so in this one, it's lecture number one, and I think there's five videos. So hopefully you would have watched all five in order, in their entirety, done a little quiz at the end, sweet as, awesome, okay? Then the other tick box that I need to get from you um, in order to give you your participation mark for the week is to participate in these sessions, okay? So the first little Kahoot I'm gonna do, I call discussion questions, okay? Um, and what we'll do is I'm gonna start up that Kahoot, we'll do it question by question, and if I behave myself and do what I'm, I'm, I should do, I'll do a little mini lecture and I'll kind of talk a little bit about why the answer is what it is and we'll just make our way through it. Now, when I launch this thing, it's gonna ask you your nickname. You have to use your UPI, okay? All lowercase would be sweet, but it doesn't matter. You could switch it up. But it, you can't have any typos, no extra characters, nothing like that. It's gonna screw the whole system up. So your UPI, the thing that's at the beginning of your standard issued University of Auckland email address, okay? That's your UPI. And then after we do this one, okay, then the bag comes out and I've got 12 chocolates in there. One's already been spent, all right? And then we'll play two what I call tournaments, okay? Now, Kahoot is ever changing. It used to be totally free. Now it's freemium, which basically means you pay for it. You get the free one, but it kind of sucks and I can't have this many students at one time and da da da, and so they get some money out of us, which is cool. Um, and they're enhancing the system. So it's been a while since I played one of these. Hopefully it still has the leaderboard like it used to. Anyway, we'll play it by ear. One thing that's new is there's different question types. So I'll tell you this in advance. If you're cruising along in one of these tournaments and you're like on the verge of getting chocolate, there's no way you could not get chocolate. Okay, I've thrown in some zinger fill in the blank questions, which are a lot harder than multiple choice, okay? So don't be upset if you're like at the leaderboard and you just get totally knocked off the peg and you lose your chocolate at the last second, okay? Nothing personal, but there's a few, uh, there's a few more difficult questions that I've added in because there's new question types that I get to play with, okay? Which is good because your tests um, and your exam will have a mix of question types. So this is more uh, similar to the type of tests that you'll get in this course. So without further ado, I'm going to play review session number one discussion questions. Okay. That's yeah, lobby. Oh, lobby music. Oh, that's the other thing. Suck. Just a second, guys. Where's my little... Oh, sorry. Thank you. Speakers. Mute that bad boy. I hate that stuff. All right. I think we're sweet. We're just going to say yes. Rejoin. Okay. Classic. All right. UPI only, please. Do I need to hit start? No. Okay. There's a little link on Canvas. If you didn't know, I could just show you that again. Link to Kahoot tournaments. Okay. If you want to get to the uh, the landing page to enter your your nickname and this pin ID. Okay. So you enter the pin ID. It'll ask you for your nickname. You guys are flying and look at you go. Look at you go. Excellent. They, they all look like UPIs to me. Give you another few seconds. 200. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Another few seconds. You should be able to join on the fly using that game pin. All right. All right. It's, it's slow now, so I'm just going to go. Here we go. Oh, it's going to give me a countdown. What was the number one investment type in 98, but fell, to 20, fell by 2016 to second place behind property, rental property? So what used to be awesome and what is now kind of second awesome? Listed shares, commercial property, bonds, or term deposits? What used to rule the roost, but is now behind good old property? Direct investment and in residential property. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, kick ass. That's how I like to start. That's good. Okay. There's usually there's usually a base kind of line of all kinds of colors because those are people that are just got because they know the game. If you could just guess right, man, and you go instant, you're gonna win. 
Ooh, look at that leaderboard. Okay. First fill in the blank ever asked of me on Kahoot. Unlike other blank assets, such as gold, stamps, etc., property is unique in that it is capable of generating cash flow. You must type in your answer. I know, it's just so, it's so unkahoot like So what is the answer? I did a little, a little test of this and all your answers should shoot up there and then the wrong ones drop out. Let's see, how does this look? Okay, you're all over the map. Oh, pretty good though. Pretty good. Hard is the right answer, okay? I've already not done what I said I would do. I didn't even open this stupid thing. I tend to do this, okay? Anyway, here is the slide in your course book in the lecture that talks about that first question, which I obviously didn't do the little mini lecture on, all right? So I wish, I, I, I had all the intention in the world to go back through and crunch all the numbers within the reserve bank data and give you the most up to date and then I got lazy and said, nah, I'm just gonna say sorry and uh, I didn't do it. But uh, my guess is we're still in the same pattern as we were back in the, when I used the 2016 data to do this, okay? So this is, this is the slide, if you're ever looking for it, that's where you'll find the answer to that question. Asset types, this is the slide for that, okay? So again, there's lots of hard assets Precious metals, all kinds of fun stuff. Property is one. The cool thing about property is it will genu generate a cash stream. Okay, that's what makes it super awesome and unique. All right. And I'll, I'll just stop there because I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay, next. Ooh, change of guard. Look at that. Okay, KPMG 2016. Yeah, there was a survey. There is no update to this kind of stuff. They stopped talking about this detail. But the bankers said in that survey, oh man, we should be like five to seven debt to income. That's really where we should be. But in fact, we are where? They were really talking about Auckland, I think. But anyway, three to six, six to nine, nine to 12. Boom. Oh. Not as good as the earlier one, but pretty good. Okay, I'll take this. The ones that kill me is the true false. I swear, I do a true false and it's so many times split 50-50. It kills me. We're gonna hit one of those. Hopefully you guys do better. If you keep this up, I will be so proud of you. Oh, top spot retained. Uh-oh, oh no, not one of these. Damn it. Okay, as of May 2016, and there's a point that I'm gonna make after this slide, Okay, there were two housing markets, this came out of the lectures in May 2017, that were affordable according to this rule of thumb, okay? You need to type it in. Spelling does count in this one. So I'm guessing it tells you whether you got it wrong right off the bat, based on the reactions I'm hearing. Let's see what I get. Okay, West Coast, I just, name one, name one of the two. Sorry guys, it's okay. If this question comes up again on the, uh, the, the tournament, just be more careful. Gotta read the instructions. Retain the top spot. Oh, I keep, I'm, I'm skipping ahead too fast. I get too carried away. All right, I'll show you the slides in a second. Okay, widespread mortgage sales in the U.S. post-GFC was largely due to non-recourse mortgages, also known as jingle mail, okay, where the bank cannot come after you and say bankrupt you and do things like that. Is that true or false? Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. You would think that having two options are going to somehow increase your odds. All right, now, I'm just gonna leave it there, I'm trying to behave myself. I'm struggling here, guys. Okay, 
This is the point that I want to make, and I'm two questions past that point, but anyway, I'm going to do it now. Uh, I'm going to try, really, really try, and I did, I did some good here. I'm going to try to update things as we go. As you will be able to gauge by watching these videos, okay, there's a, a little layer of dust that's starting to settle on the top of them, all right? It's getting a little bit, you know, the shelf life is starting to wear down a little bit. Um, some of the information is a bit outdated, okay? It's only a few years, but still, in the property market, things move rapidly. All right, this is a slide out of your, uh, your course book, and the point that I was making on this slide is the pattern at the time I recorded this was investors are just going up to the moon, and they're really kind of pushing out first-time home buyers, making it hard. They're really competing for the same housing stock. Usually it's the lower quartile, cheaper stuff. Makes sense. Okay, that was the pattern right up until about 2016, 2017, all right? Here's the latest. Now I share this with you for two reasons. Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons actually. Okay, one, and I'll get right to the point. The stuff that we talk about here in these review sessions are testable. It's not just recovering the stuff that's on the lectures. So for instance, this kind of, this is maybe not the best example, but there might be things that I will present to you guys in these review sessions that's kind of new, especially this updated stuff. Um, that's fair game on a test or an exam, all right? So don't think that you just freebase the stuff online and kind of take notes and it's all about what's in the course book. This stuff is fair game too, because these sessions give me an opportunity to update you and give you some more of the latest info. Okay, and there's, there's a point that I'm making on here. First, here's where we were basically when, when I produced that, that material. And you see the trend, okay? Completely, utterly bounced the other direction. Now there's all kinds of reasons for that. Um, but this slide tells two stories, okay? One story is this is a change of trajectory and first time home buyers are kind of coming back in a sense, okay? Now we're, keep in mind this is, they're coming back in the sense of a percentage of total share of, of buyer types. Um, what's not shown here is the total transactions and what's going on with house prices and because it's quite a complex actual situation. But one thing that I thought was interesting is when this data came out, these kind of headlines started coming out, okay? First time home buyers take bigger part of housing market than investors for the first time since records began. Now, if you're sitting on the fence as a would-be first time home buyer, you start seeing stuff like that in the media, you think, man, I'm gonna miss out. I'm gonna, you start getting itchy. I'm gonna have to just do it because everybody else is doing it. If I don't get a house, I know it's expensive, but I just gotta do it, okay? Well, this is, is quite misleading because what you'll notice in this graph is you'll see the, the, the investors, they call them multiple property owners because they really can't figure out the true investors or not. But anyway, multiple property owners, you see they've split these by mortgage, which means they've gone to the bank and gotten a loan, a mortgage to buy that property, or what they interpret as cash. Either they actually had under their uh, pillow a gigantic thing of cash and used that to buy it, or more likely they went ahead and borrowed against another property and so the purchase just used cash that's probably what really happened but the point here is um, these two are really one group but they split them up into two parts 27 percent and 11 percent so if you look at it by these little subgroups really they're just investors one's using cash and one's using a loan so this is quite disingenuous to say that Investor, investors are actually taking a second back seat. Investors still total 37% of all transactions. That's a massive share, especially if you look internationally. There's, huge, there's still a huge role to play in the, uh, in the housing market. This is Auckland, by the way. So I guess what I'm saying, and I don't know if I say this in such colorful terms in the, the lectures, but don't allow somebody to piss on your neck and tell you it's raining, okay? Don't just take what might be in the media and say, oh, supply, you know, think for yourself, okay? Really, really, it's a lot of the stuff that I put in here is kind of, I won't call it fringe, but it tries to challenge the, the, the things that you might receive uh, and be fed in terms of the, the media, New Zealand Herald, things like that, okay? So I would like you, by the time you exit my class, to be able to gauge things and think for yourself. Yeah, maybe look beyond the headline and actually maybe look at the data or, or be a bit more critical of things, all right? So again, all this stuff fair game and please think for yourself and be critical. Okay, uh, here's debt to income. Anyway, I'm just gonna skip through because I screwed up. 
Okay, here's housing affordability. Sorry, guys, that's the slide. I screwed up. Okay, one other thing, all right? This is actually relates to the whole free game. Okay, I did do the update on this. I haven't run the, the precise numbers, but what I can tell you with confidence is Wanganui, Fanganui, yeah, um, that is no longer within the realm of affordable. Okay, that has shifted up into the next color, yeah, blue, yellow, whatever. Um, so right now, as of today, and this might be on a test, this might be something you might want to write down just in case, okay? There's one market that I'm aware of, we'll say that, make that official because you, you heard it in this class, that is currently affordable, okay, according to this uh, demographia, or it's, it's not demographias, they don't have ownership of this, but there's a general rule of thumb if you look at the multiplier between a household's income and the, the house price it must pay, um, 3.0 and below is sweet. Anything above that gets into different degrees of unaffordability. So right now in New Zealand, we have the lovely West Coast. It's pretty much the only place um, that is genuinely affordable according to the kind of international rule of thumb of housing affordability, okay? Used to be two places, now it's just one, all right? West Coast. Take a note. Let's skip back to here. See if we can improve. Oh no. Okay. Oh well. It happens to the best of us. Negative equity occurs when a borrower loses some of their equity or the deposit invested in a home. Is that a true or a false statement? Okay, you guys can make more noise. Okay, go on. Don't be quiet again. True or false? Come on, 50-50. What's it gonna be, blue or green, or blue or red, sorry. Damn, it looks so true. It looks so true. Okay. I love true false questions. I make them so delicious. So just, you have to just fall into it because this guy wouldn't lie to me. Yeah, he's my lecturer. Of course he's gonna tell me, tell me something true. Okay. All right. These are the slides that kind of talk about that a bit. Um, anyway, this is uh, this shows you in context. This is a bit old now. This is post GFC. That's what the point I was making. This is worse as it got for the U uh, for New Zealand. This is how worse it got, how bad it got for other states in the U.S. Okay, we got away pretty squeaky clean. Um, so, what is negative equity? All right. Uh, negative equity is. Essentially, you owe more money to the bank than the house is worth, could be sold for. So your loan to the bank is 500 grand and uh, the house can sell for 400 grand. You are $100,000 in what's called negative equity, okay? So in a sense, let's go back to that question. Where is that question? Can I get that question? It's probably gone now, okay. Some of, you've lost all of your equity. You've not only lost all of your equity, you're actually in debt to your eyeballs. Even if you sell out, ooh, even if you sell out, you won't break even. The bank is going to come hound you for the last bit of money that you owe them. Okay? So negative equity is, is, is much worse than losing some of your equity. You're, it's all gone. Toast. Okay. Oh, another change. Oh, wait a minute. This is the same one as before. Good job. A corporate real estate manager is a property manager who represents a corporate client. Hmm. What about that one? It's a nice true-false for you. So far, we're, we're not doing too good on these true-falses. But I know you guys can change right now. Come on. Better. Better. Now. I know some of you have just figured out, this dude likes false friggin' answers. That's what's going on. And I have to admit, I have to admit that I like false. So my advice to you is if you are given some kind of question by me and you're just like, I have no idea, your, your probability of getting it right goes up if you just guess false. No guarantee that I won't use true, but Mike likes false answers, okay? Just know that. Okay, so of course this slide doesn't actually offer anything. It's just the slide where this information came from. Think of a corporate real estate manager as the in-house 
real estate guru. They are not a property manager per se. They, they deal with all kinds of stuff, but it's, uh, you know, I think the example I might have said in the slide or in the, in the lecture was Procter & Gamble or some big firm, you know, they're making diapers, they're doing whatever, they're making something. They, they, they're not property people, they don't care about property, but they need property to do their business and to make money and make everything happen. So they get somebody like this guy, yeah, he's their B prop grad, and he comes in and he just does everything. He does buyer lease decisions, helps them, negotiates new leases, purchases land, works, on, works with a developer, does some maybe capital improvements, replaces the roof on their big fancy building, whatever. Helps them out. He's their property guy or girl, okay? That's what a corporate real estate manager does. It is not a property manager that works with a particular type of tenant. Okay. Where are we at now? Eight of eight. I won't even pronounce that name. Some name of some uh, academic found energy used for commercial construction is roughly how much of the entire lifetime building energy use? To build this thing, does it take a quarter of the total energy consumption, a half of the energy consumption, a third of it, or a fifth of it? I know you guys got this in the bag. Man, was I right. Good job. That's what I like to see. Yeah. Okay, this is why I tell every group of students, okay, if, if I have in this class, and unfortunately this has never occurred, but if, if I have a situation where every single person enrolled in my course gets an A+, I will go to bat and I'll put my head on, because I will get crushed by somebody. Somebody's going to say, what the hell's going on here? And I'll just say, man, these guys are just brilliant, and I'm really good. And together, we just totally killed this thing. And these guys are geniuses. All right? So if this kind of result comes through the whole course, I'm just going to have nothing but A pluses. It'll just it'll finally happen. Um, so uh, anyway, I love to see this. Okay, the 50-50 split on a true-false, mm, I'd rather avoid those. All right? Okay, now, hopefully I can see the leaderboard. It's going to go to the stupid podium, I know. Okay, that's good, but I want to see the leaderboard. Show me the leaderboard. Okay. I don't know why they have to be all dramatic about it. Okay, thank you. All right, runners up. Okay, oh, here we go. This is, show, where are my runners up? You little. Uh, I knew this was going to happen. Next, okay. If I go next, I'm going to lose it entirely. All right. Oh, wait a minute. This is not for the chocolates. Forget it. Never mind. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, oh, well. I'll have to figure it out. Uh, and it's not going to show me the leaderboard. View full report. Back to podium. No, 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 no. Sorry, guys. Skip animation. Where's my runners up? Oh, okay, they're not there. Uh, all right. We'll figure it out. Okay? So, that's the end of this discussion thing. So, uh, now at this stage, I know it's... I'm not going to take offense, honestly, if some of you have some urgent matter, all right, and some of you get up, okay? Don't feel like I'm going to somehow see you and recognize you and put down a note to do something nasty to you on a test, okay? But that's kind of the end of the participation marks, okay? From this point forward, it's like you guys sitting at home listening, yeah, on, on the live stream. You can't get any chocolate. You could stick with us and listen and try to participate. Sweet, and maybe you'll win, but you can't get any chocolate. So you guys can go do something else if you want. All right. So you guys in the room, what you're doing at this stage, and we're playing for a bit of chocolate. Okay. <laughs> so first tournament. Now this one, UPIs, forget them. You can put whatever kind of crazy name because part of the battle is getting your crazy name up on the board. So the first of two tournaments, there is your pin, and you guys are still doing the UPIs. You could do, oh, there we go, I'm getting something different now. Daddy, okay, sweet. All right, nothing nasty, guys. Keep it clean. Oh, Donald Trump. I knew somebody had to do Donald Trump. 
All right, at 100, I'm just, oh, okay, okay, you guys are well in, okay. You could always join on the fly. Your chances are gonna be worse. It's okay, come on, come on, get in there. True, false, get in there. You, have, you know what the answer is to some of these, okay? Okay, the pin's at the bottom, if you're late getting in. Big improvement. Okay. So it's all about speed, to be honest. It's all about speed. Very good. Some of them. <laughs> Some of them are the same. <laughs> like each one that we've had so far. Getting closer and closer to perfection. Houston Chip City. Okay. It is a lot more boring when they're the same questions, isn't it? But you guys do so well the second time through. Oh, this is a bit different. See, lulled you in a, se a false sense of uh, complacency. And now this hits you. It's gonna totally screw up your score. Mmm, a little bit less good. There's a true one. Well, we, we can talk about it later. We just got to get through this. Which of the following is not a hard asset? Oh, no. <laughs> you can't take it back. Okay. All right, now I'm, I believe the next one is gonna be the, the real challenge question. So if you don't answer this right, you're probably ain't gonna gain chocolate. Here we go. Yes. Oh, double points. Here we go. How fast can you type? First, do you know the answer? How fast can you type? Now, I wouldn't actually a ask such a question, exact question, on a test. It's a little bit too hardcore. If I was teaching marketing, I would. Maybe management, but not, not in this course. But I have to kind of see who can answer and who can't. Because I do talk about it in the lecture. What kind of anchor is that? You misspelled it. That's actually not that bad. Good job, guys. Okay. Now, this podium thing's gonna go LK, okay. Because it's not gonna cooperate with me, we'll, 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 we'll let this thing do its job. Uncle. <laughs> Look at you guys dancing. Okay, now, just a second. No, I don't want to replay the animation. No, just a second. I, I, I need to go. I need to go and view the full report. 
Oh, this. I used to not have to do this. Come on, give me the top friggin' players. I don't want to view the podium. Sorry, guys, sorry. I knew this was going to happen. Need help? Something, something, something. I need help. Questions? Oh, you're kidding me. Uh, sorry, wait, wait. Say again? Other players. Somebody speak loud and clearly. Hey, yeah, I like that. Click on players. Yeah. Oh, it's already there. Oh, thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate this. And it's all recorded. Yes. Thank you. Okay, where's Uncle? Oh, I lost him. There we go. Where is, uh, where's Benny? There we go. Where's LK? Even with my glasses, I struggle. Is LK here? There we go. Uh, Alex. Is Alex the lion here? Oops, sorry. Sorry. Give that one to Alex. How many have I done? Alex was number four. GM. Where's General Motors? K G E E. Oh, sorry. Oh, how many we got? Six. Okay, I'll stop there. Sorry, guys. We're, we got one more tournament to go. Sorry. I'll be more efficient next time. Play. Teach. Classic. Are these things not coming back up this way? You guys got to throw them back. There we go. There we go. They're all out. Go on. <laughs> and there was some over here. You guys have any? Throw them back? Yeah, no. Okay. No. <laughs> not the equipment. No. no. All right. I will strive to get more unique questions for you, okay? I know it's a bit of a bummer to have you ask the same exact questions we just covered. All right, I'm just gonna start, sorry. Sorry, come on, you had enough time. Six questions, okay? I said I will strive to do new questions, okay? I expect in incredible accuracy with these. Wow. wow. Number two. Post GFC, now this is again as of 2016 data. I'll put that out there. This was in the lecture. Trends have changed a little bit, but this is based on the lecture. Roughly twice. Number three. Okay, this one we just did. So I'm, I'm gonna see very good results here. Banks says they should be five to seven, but in reality, they're what? Man, that's as close to perfection as I think I've ever seen. Four or six. What country did two cities recently impose a 15% foreign buyer tax to deter foreign speculators? Was it the UK, the US, Canada, or Australia? Who did that? <laughs> Excellent job, guys. True or false? Residential properties outnumber commercial, but globally, commercial properties are worth more. Is that a true statement or a false statement? So I like that confident, out loud answer. That's good. Now, wait a second, guys. It's false. 
If you remember, there was this uh, cool little info, I thought it was cool, infographic in one of the slides, and the amount of value of residential property was just massive. The commercial was actually fairly small. It was a big, yeah, I can't remember. I'd have to bring it up. So anyway, it's false, sorry. But I know it's a bit of a misconception because you think of these big high-rise buildings, of course they must be valuable. But the assets uh, in, in the world of property, the big asset in numbers and value collective is residential, globally. <laughs> All right, type answer, double score, I know. In the year blank, what year? This is a numeric kind of answer, okay? Did the global crossover occur? That's when more people in that year began living in cities rather than rural areas globally. <laughs> what year did that occur? You could do it. You got this. It's a lot of guesses. <laughs> Good job, guys. Okay, I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Skip animation. Woo! Just a second. Uh, how do I get out of here? Next. I can do this now. I can do this. Where's my report? View full report. View report. I'm there. I'm there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, players. Yeah, I'm there. I'm with you. Okay, where's? You've already won. Where's LK again? Here we go. Ready? Ooh, sorry. That was a little heavy. Where's Bl uh, Blake? Where is Weast? Okay, let me just see how many more I got. Got two more, people. Where is Chino? Where at? And last but not least, oh, daddy's daddy. Where's daddy's daddy? Am I missing you? Are they not in the room? Are you daddy's daddy? I didn't think you would be. <laughs> he must be online. Okay, we go lucky Saskia. Oh, you and you almost left. Or did she leave? Do you want to give, is this you? Okay, here we go. All right, let's throw back the ball. All right, guys. Hey, oh, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. That's why I got my safety glasses. Okay, I'll do my best to have more unique questions next time and make it more exciting on the, uh, the tournaments, okay? See you guys next week. I was going to introduce myself to the gym yesterday and did it. Oh, yeah. One, one, oh, it's going to have been yesterday. Um, I was there. I think. Oh, no money, I think. Yeah. Um, That's cool. I'm William. Excellent. So, anyway, I'll be in touch with you guys and we'll figure out how you guys are comfortable. I can put your contacts on the canvas if you're cool. We'll figure it out. Okay? Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, your office hours, you just have to email you and sit Yeah, I don't have any, so just email me and then we'll figure it out. Cool. Sweet. All right. Hey, how's it going? Good, thanks. Uh, something I'm um, not sure for your answer will be, but yeah. uh, I'm taking 281 as yeah. well. Okay. I'm actually a second year student, but I had a time table clash, so I can't uh, remember cool. last year. Yeah. But, um, so, with the sessions being on Thursdays, I actually work full time Thursdays and Fridays. Um, Which sessions on Thursdays? 281. It's Friday. Yeah, still like that. Don't do that to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just wondering if there is like any way for me to like participate in the class without actually doing the Kahoot. Uh, yeah, it's possible. So you're working that day? Is that what it yeah. is? All right. Well, shoot me an email. Okay. And what will end up happening is week by week you're going to get a zero because if you don't do the participation. <laughs> and then week by week, you'll have to probably remind me and say, yo, dude, I'm the guy that said uh, I'm working, and you know, and then I'll have to just double check that you've actually done the 
as long as you watch the videos, uh, yeah, I'll override it, okay? Okay. Yeah, because I'm not going to sit there and remember every single time I do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if we, if we do that, then yeah. everything will be sweet. Okay. okay? But send me an email now yes. and say we just talked about it. Yeah, okay. All right? I'll do that. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Kat. Yeah. It was really interesting. Was good. Thank oh, you. thanks. Um, I just want to ask if the questions will be uploaded onto Canvas. Uh, I should see. Uh, the, the ones we just went through? Uh, yeah. There's a, there's a thing called challenge. I didn't talk about it, but uh, I might. Because there's, they repeat between some of the discussion and the uh, the other ones. Um, I'll probably take my time to put it into all the questions that are in the tournaments and the unique questions that are in those three coups that we did. I'll put them in probably a new one, and then I'll do it as what's called a challenge. And uh, the way that works is you, you get on the your your app, so you have to get a phone or something like that, or a tablet, get a Kahoot app, and then you can go and compete in your own time, and you can do it multiple times, so it's basically, it's like a little competitive thing. So it's more like a question set? Yeah, so it's like a question set that you could then just work through each time, and it kind of, I think it, it tracks since it's on the app, it knows, it's like, okay, you got 70% last time, and then the next time it says, oh, try to get 80, or try to get 100, or whatever. And I think they might even say, do the ones that you missed again, or they, they do it in the app, and that's mm -hmm. kind of helpful. So that's the way I was going to do it, rather than making it on Canvas quizzes. Um, almost all of the questions are already in the embedded quizzes at the end yeah. of the videos, mm -hmm. so you can always go to them and rewatch those again if you want. But um, I'll give the, the challenges a go, and students have appreciate those in the past. Right. Cool. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, sweet. All right. Thank you. Yep. I'll see you next week. All right. So, yeah. um, yeah. I just had a question regarding the you know, watching the videos, right? Yeah. I, uh, the full class, I watched uh, all of the next one, so we yeah. can still watch it after. Oh, yeah, you, you can watch it. Uh, no, not exactly. Um, I have, between you and I, put a little bit of grace in there, and it's usually one video. Don't tell anybody about this, right? So if there's five videos, I'll say four. And so you'll be okay. But if you do that in the future, um, you might end up losing your money. The whole idea is that you need to have watched all the material before we, we come. And then, you know, to be honest, if you do it right now, I won't actually pull the data until later tonight. Anyway. So you'll be all right. Don't tell anybody that either. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. So when you say liquidity, liquidity, yeah, yeah. Party yeah. Increases. Yeah. It means like if it's more difficult for. No, it means it's easier to sell. It. So if liquidity goes up, it's like when when a, when a market is hot, it's actually a lot easier to waltz up and put a property that you want to sell at an auction. At. It'll go. When say the market is like right now, it's a little bit uh, in the doldrums. It's harder to move a property to sell it. So it's it's less liquid. It's it's harder to transact. To get rid of it, to sell it off. To it off. So when the increase when like price goes down? No, it'll decrease. Usually, when price goes down, the activity in the market goes down, and it's just harder to sell in general. When the prices are going up, the market gets excited. There's a lot of transactions, and it's easier to less marketing time, quicker sales transaction time. Things like that. that tends to be the, the way the market. Because it uh, but um, doesn't like problem basis want to make more profit for like more money? So when they like decrease the like, uh, but again, how property investors make money mainly is when they, they make money on the change of price. Ultimately that's that's pretty much why they're in the why they've invested in the market. Not so much the cash flow from the uh, the rent. A lot of the, a lot of these uh, investments are, are what's called negative geared, so they actually lose money every week. They lose money. They have to take their day job payments, salaries, and pay off, uh, top up the uh, the loss making property investment. So their only way of making money is if the property is worth more after they bought it. Yeah. So if property prices are declining, maybe they go ahead and sell to try to, you know, secure their profit. But often, um, investors will sometimes just ride out and expect the property market to bounce again and then sell it at a later date because they're expecting these capital gains to come back from them. 
Oh, okay. Sorry, oh, it's okay. it is all of a sudden. It's for the first one. Yeah. For the first one, it just shut down. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, no, man. It's, it's all good. Any other comments? Second one, one question. Um, sorry, it's another topic. But, like, do insurance companies are responsible for finding contractors for like people? I don't know. Contractors for what? For like home repair. Uh, you mean like, uh, like not all projects? Like an you know, insurance company will be there if you have a fire, yeah. or if you have a flood, or yes. if Earthquakes bit special. Yeah. That tends to be what the insurance company does. It depends on the coverage you're talking about. Yes, yeah, so if, if your tenant comes around yeah. and takes a hammer to the wall, mm -hmm. then there are there is coverage that you could get as a landlord. Yeah. Is that kind of what you're talking about? But they won't they wouldn't be involved in actually getting the contract to do it. Like as in like do they like aggregate like different companies, like repair companies that they show to like I think you're thinking more of like a panel beater. A panel is? No, that's like a, a car repair. Oh, Those yes. insurance companies will have preferred suppliers. Okay. But tend not to have that with a real estate house okay. yeah, or real estate. Real estate. Mm -hmm. It tends to be more that if you have an insurable uh, event, so you can go and make a claim, yes. that as long as you communicate with your insurer and make sure you convince them that you don't just get your brother. Yes. somebody to go ahead and charge five times as much. Yes. They'll, they'll double check you don't do that, but okay. it's up to you really to probably find somebody on the open market to go do your right. work. Right. Sorry, it was just like, it's just a business, business idea. Oh, okay. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Well, yes. hopefully there's money in it for you. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Is that okay if I can spill tea maybe next? Yeah, sure. Session? Yeah, or just shoot me an email and just meet me in my office. That's probably best. We'll do so. All right. Okay. Fifth All right. level, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, room 526. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for the Question for next week. Yeah. I see you've got Maryland issues and then you have a bike with frame and you've got a hell on L3. Yeah. It's straight into the bike with frame, right? Or do I. Uh, well, because you're going to have to watch the Maryland <laughs> issue lectures, yeah. But yeah. I, I can't see any any Maryland issue slides. I know, I know. I've followed her up. Right, so they're, they're coming or. You know as much as me right now. I don't know. Okay, so watch the videos and do the quiz. Watch the videos, maybe for now. I'll, I'll chase her up the video. Okay, because you're going to get a lot of people saying the word. Well, I'll probably post the cameras and I'll explain. I'll, I'll give her a little bit of time. I don't want to say, listen, she's not going to give me slides. <laughs> I can't give you guys slides. Okay. Um, if they don't come, then obviously it's old school. She's lecturing. You're taking notes. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Because I went through the PDF course guide. Yeah. It goes straight from I know, I know. the other person to the black Yeah, and house. she just redid it, and the way she did it, it's, it was a very different style, and she never gave me any kind of notes at all. So, was she? Uh, she's a little bit younger than me. Okay, so she's not old No, 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 no. no it's just the business school has a, a special studio that they created, and it's really meant for it's a camera up there, and, you're, and there's a, a glass thing, and you're, you're meant to actually write. On a, a glass plate, it, it's kind of a nifty little thing that they have, and she decided to use it, and so that's how she recorded those lectures. And she never gave me any slides to kind of supplement the lecture recordings. I've asked for those. If they come, they come. If they don't, then you just have to listen and take notes. So it's both both the Maryland issues and also the lecture. Yes. Next week, that's next week. All right, so we take care.